this might just be the most eye-opening video you've ever seen on helping you understand the true cause of your pain. This might be the thing that finally connects the dots for you and gives you real clarity as to why you hurt. In this video, I'm gonna share with you the number one most overlooked cause or diagnosis of piriformis syndrome as well as other back and sciatica type pains. And so look, if you're confused about why you hurt, if it seems like no one can figure out what's going on, you've tried everything but nothing is working, then you need to watch this video. Real quick, for those of you who do not know me and or those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Dr. Charlie Johnson. I am a physical therapist and I specialize in teaching people all around the world with unresolved back, butt, and sciatica problems how to naturally resolve their pain so that they do not need to rely on others. And I teach them uh, how to use the power of the mind and movement as medicine. All right, that being said, let's dive into it. All right, so you're probably watching this video because you're trying to figure out the most likely source of your pain in the butt or back or leg. Maybe you've been told you have piriformis syndrome or sciatica or something like that. And in the past, to help people figure out the most likely source, I've created this better than an MRI DIY diagnostic guide. By the way, at the time of shooting this video, I am updating it. This is literally the best resource, or I'm attempting to make it the best resource in the world. That's how strongly I feel about it, um, for helping people get past this diagnostic block and really without needing x-rays, MRIs, uh, and or paying a bunch to see a, a specialist, um, what's most likely going on? You can absolutely figure it out. I literally give you everything, including what you'll see in this video inside of this guide. Check it out. All right. But I've created this guide to help people figure out the most likely source of their symptoms. And I lay out my entire diagnostic algorithm in a flow chart fashion of things that be causing back, butt, and or sciatica problems. So lots of stuff causes what people believe to be piriformis syndrome. Could be a back problem causing pain into the butt. Could be a sciatica problem. Could be disc problem, joint problem, stenosis, all of those things within that. Could be an SI joint issue, a hip issue, high hamstring problem, or piriformis syndrome um, itself, right? But there are many people who go through either this guide or the first portion of the guide um, and or see a bunch of specialists, get a bunch of MRIs and or multiples of different MRIs, nerve tests, x-rays, things like that. And they're still left scratching their head about why they hurt and why they're in pain. And so how is it you can see all these really smart people and do all these different things and nobody can figure it out? This is why, all right? So absolutely these things can cause a pain in the butt. All these structural problems within the body, a problem with the disc, a problem with the joints, problems with the SI joints, whatever, right? But there's only one side of the equation. These things, these flow charts that I just showed you are all examples of things within the body that cause pain. When you herniate a disc, you damage some tissue, injure some tissue, and that causes pain. Pain equals damage. And generally, there's a clear and known injury or cause for your pain. Generally, a recent onset of pain within the past three to six months. There's usually a clear and consistent movement pain relationship. When I do this, it hurts. When I don't do that, it doesn't hurt and it doesn't change. And because things are a little bit more black and white on this side of the world or this side of the equation, um, most people generally agree upon what's happening. Now, how is it that you still don't know what's going on? Because people have been missing the other side of the equation. And in order to understand the other side of the equation, you need to understand what pain is. Pain is an unpleasant sensory experience designed to protect you from some perceived threat or danger. That is sort of the definition of pain at its core. And what this means is that not only can the body cause pain, but the brain can also learn to experience pain as well. And so just like a musician plays tunes over and over again, and they can play them in their sleep, after some time, you can also learn to live in a heightened state. You can also learn to experience pain. And if you think of pain as your alarm system, that alarm system can kind of get stuck in the on position. And so just like a musician plays tunes over and over again, they put in a lot of reps on the guitar or on the piano, and they can play that tune in their sleep because they really get good at it. Uh, you can also have the same thing happens where you can train your brain to experience pain, in which case pain doesn't necessarily equal damage. It equals danger or threat. And so let me just get this off my chest here in a moment, because what you're about to learn could completely change the course of how you approach solving this problem um, and might be a little bit shocking to you and or might be a little bit confronting or challenging for you, right? And that's good. That's what we're here to do. But don't take this the wrong way. This does not mean that if you discover here in a moment uh, that, wow, I have a lot of evidence to suggest the pain that I'm experiencing is driven by my brain. It does not mean that you're crazy. It does not mean that it's made up. It does not mean that it's not real. It is very real. How do you know? Because you're feeling it. You're not making it up. Okay. You're not crazy. Nothing's going on there. In fact, you have a really good brain. Think of it like that. All right. So 
What are the signs now? We talked about the signs of that which means pain is most likely coming from the body. But what are the signs or the evidence or the clues or the questions you can ask yourself that suggest maybe your pain experience is driven by your brain? Well, first things first, did your pain start without a clear injury? Maybe you can't pinpoint what happened. Or maybe you're blaming something that happened years ago as to why you hurt now, what I call perceived injury. Years of sitting at my desk, years of bad posture, or you're saying, I think it was because I started running more. I'm guessing that I had bad form when I was at the gym. Notice how you're thinking, you're guessing, you're using these words of uncertainty. If you're not sure that you hurt yourself, then you probably didn't hurt yourself, all right? No clear injury. Has your pain lasted beyond normal tissue healing time? So we know that within the body, most tissues heal within three to six month time frame. If you break your arm today or break a bone, you're going to get better within eight to 12 weeks. That's just the way it works. If you herniate a disc, we will see that the disc on image reabsorbs within a six-ish month timeline. And so why is it the pain lasts beyond that? Did your pain start during a time of fight or flight, a time where you are on more high alert or a time of change, good or bad? Maybe you just started a new job. Maybe you just graduated. Maybe uh, you just had a baby. Maybe you just got divorced. Or maybe there was someone close to you that passed away. Is your pain inconsistent? You have some good or bad days and you just can't explain it. You just can't make sense of it. Is your pain associated with or changed with stress? Stress at home, stress at work, financial stress, things like that. Do you experience relief of your pain with distraction? If pain is a danger signal, so also... Our feelings of fear, worry, concern, frustration, figuring out, grappling with your pain. And so what's the opposite of these danger signals? The antidote to them? Joy, happiness, understanding, clarity. And so have you ever gone on vacation and noticed that your pain is less? Have you ever been sitting around a fire and or around a table with your best friends chit-chatting, having a good time and noticed, wow, I just sat for like an hour and I felt really good. When usually you'd last only five minutes. These are signs, right? Do you have multiple body symptoms? Meaning, do you not only have pain in the butt and or the leg or back or whatever, but maybe you have some knee pain or shoulder pain or neck pain, or maybe you have other systems issues going on. So maybe you have irritable bowel syndrome, other digestive issues. Maybe you have other skin conditions, things like that. Does your pain shift, spread, or move around? It started in the right butt, and now it's in the left butt. Started here, and now it's there. And because of that, as you'll see in a minute, you're probably given many different diagnoses to try to account for all of that because nobody can clearly explain it because they don't know this. When the pain is in your right butt cheek, right? It's piriformis syndrome on that side. But then it's in your left butt cheek. It's like, oh, well, now it's your back. Now it's your disc, right? And then it goes to your hip. And now it's, you've got bursitis or something like that, right? We'll talk more about that here just in a moment. Do you have delayed onset of pain? You do something now, but you don't hurt until two days later or the next day. Have you been given, just like I alluded to, many or no clear diagnoses? If you've been told many things are wrong with you, and you've, given, you've been given lots of different diagnoses and or reasons why you hurt, then it's not clear. Your diagnosis is not black and white. It's probably because nobody can agree upon what's happening. Because you go to them and you keep looking for the solution, keep asking them, hey, what's going on? They just want to give you something because that's what you asked for. And so they give you this label, and then the next person gives you this label, and the next person gives you this label. Or have you been given no clear diagnosis? Maybe some people have been up front with you and they say, hey, look, it's not making a whole lot of sense. We do your x-rays, we do your MRIs, we can't really find anything that's abnormal. Are you someone that you would maybe define as being of high pressure? You put a lot of pressure on yourself. Are you a perfectionist? Are you a people pleaser? Do you have a type A good student type of personality? Dr. Charlie, I'll do whatever you tell me to get better. I'll be a good student. If you tell me to do something twice a day, I'll do it four times a day. Just recognize that if that's you and pain is a dangerous signal, then you're living just by way of the way you're reacting to not only your pain, but also life. You're living in a heightened state, which can fuel the pain experience. Do you have unclear movement pain relationship? Many people reach out to me and say, Dr. Charlie, I've gone through a bunch of different motions. I've gone through some of your tests and I just can't clearly reproduce it. So sorry, I'm out. You can't help me. Uh, no, <laughs> just because you don't understand right? why no motions bother you or why something is not as clear as you would hope doesn't mean that there's no reason as to why that's happening. You just don't know what you don't know. And that's a sign. Okay, So if you have trouble clearly reproducing or finding different motions consistently to reproduce your pain or make things better or make things worse, then again, that is one clue.
Do you have yummy isolated motions, but yucky integrated motions or activities? Here's what I mean. Running, for example, I think we all would agree, is an integrated activity. It's a bunch of motions wrapped up in running, right? So when you run, you have to do many isolated motions in a string. You have to move your arms. You have to twist your trunk. You have to kick your legs forward and back and jump on one leg and then jump to the other leg, all kinds of different things. And so if you're someone who says, Charlie, I can't really make this worse. I'm doing all these different motions and all these different things. Can't really make it worse, but I just can't run. And we say, that's weird. You can do all these individual components, which are running, but then when you put them together, you can't do it. Are you someone who does a bunch of different treatments and you feel good in the moment, but then those same things that made you feel good now or in the moment make you feel worse later? Kind of flip-flop the effect there. A little fishy, a little weird. And here's a big one. Do you have a lack of response to physical treatment? Have you tried lots of different things aimed at fixing the physical body and it just hasn't worked? Acupuncture, osteopathic, PT, massage, trying to stretch this out, stretch that out, whatever it is. If so, and you have not responded, that is a sign. The world only lives over here. Doctors, I don't care who you go to. Most doctors, I would say 95% plus doctors, do not understand how to evaluate not only for the body, but then also signs of pain driven by the brain. And this is what's challenging. You do not take just one piece of evidence and say it's this or it's that. You need to build a case for what's going on by stacking the evidence, stacking the clues, putting it all together and making sense of the picture. And what's challenging is that many times there's a mixed bag. So your pain experience might not just be all from the, from the body. It might be some also from the brain. Pain experience might not just be all due to brain. It might be some of the body, right? There might be ways you're bending, lifting, twisting that are picking the scab and fueling the pain experience, but there may be certain thoughts and or responses to the pain. There might be other things in your life that are going on that could also be fueling it. And so most of the medical world lives in either one or two camps. Pain is from the brain and that's it. We're only going to treat that. Forget about PT and motion. Doesn't make sense. Other people, most people live only on the body side of things. You've got to figure out what's going on and you've got to fix it, right? And I'm just telling you that if you've tried lots of that and it hasn't worked, and again, that is one piece of evidence along with a bunch of other evidence. You cannot only treat the body and expect to have the most permanent long-lasting results and the best outcome. You cannot only treat the brain and expect to have the most permanent, long-lasting, best outcome. Why do I say that? Because they're connected. You cannot separate the two. They are intimately connected, and therefore you need to find someone who understands both of these worlds. Hopefully you can see that someone like myself does, and there are probably other people out there that do as well. But at the end of the day, you can have a mixed bag. Oftentimes we need to address both the brain in the body. And so the way that we teach people to sort of get off the fence and really understand what they need to focus on when it comes to solving their problem is by giving them what we call an evidence list. And so I would recommend that even based off of this data, that maybe you create your own, right? Your evidence list is something I provide to people, which allows people to objectively inside of my private coaching program, the glute relief accelerator program, um, objectively look at what's going on. And Rather than me trying to convince them of what's going on, it's never the intent. Instead, I lay everything out for them and I let them be the judge or I would let you be the judge. As you go through and you look at all these different clues on the side of the brain and the body, and even within that, within the brain and within the body, right? What do we think is most likely driving the pain experience, right? And so we allow you to collect your own evidence. We give you all the resources and tools and understand that you need to figure this stuff out. And then it becomes very clear. And what's really cool is that by going through an exercise like this, you can move forward with total clarity and conviction instead of just randomly trying a bunch of things, hoping that it works. There is no guesswork here. It's test work. It's very scientific. We lead you right to the solution. All right. So hopefully this video is valuable. Maybe your mind was completely blown and you just learned some things that you had never even thought of and or never even heard of. And so that was the purpose of this video is to help you kind of understand what is often overlooked because lots of times people only focus on the body, but very few people understand how to connect the dots between both the body 
and the brain. And again, if this video was useful, I'd ask that you just leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Was it helpful? Do you want other content just like this? And then uh, if you're past the problem solving phase now because you feel like, oh my gosh, I have some clarity and you're ready for solutions, check the description below where you can get in touch with us. Um, also where you can get access to a ton of other valuable resources. Be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications when we go live every single week and let me know your comments in the section below. Thanks.